so we have three brothers, okay, and uh, they decide I don't know why they have given this example. Decide to have children. And uh, until his family has two female children. Some, something more interesting, an example. <laughs> I don't know, but anyway. So that is, uh, as you can guess, and it says on, on top that it is negative binomial. But what negative binomial? So it's like a problem was just uh, <sighs> we have one person and that person has kids until uh, he has like two female kids that is a negative binomial but what it, it, it's asking is in a sense uh, number of male children born to all three of them so it's uh, like putting them together oh. So in fact, if I look at this x here, this x here is in fact x1 plus x2 plus x3. So the question is finding the PMF of this random variable, the sum of three random variables. No, sum of random variables, even two, two for example, is not an easy problem. I'm mean, finding the, the PMF or PDF. But it's interesting that some random variables, when you add them the same, when you add them, you will get something which is, uh, in fact, similar to the random variable you're adding. Like, uh, we, we will see, in fact, that's part of the, the statistics that we, that we will start next week, maybe. Uh, that is, in fact, when you add a normal random variables, you will get a normal random variable. So, in fact, they should be independent. Uh, and there are others that when you add and you assume some kind of independence, then you will get a random variable which has the same, is, is from the same family, say. Uh, th this is one of them. It's interesting that uh, this is one of them. When you add uh, some negative binomials, you will get another negative binomial. 
Now, there are, there are different ways to uh, attack a pro problem like this that I will do it uh, in a more intuitive way today. Now, but the more rigorous way is to uh, prove, prove it rigorously using what we call a moment generating function. Uh, because we are dealing with, uh, say, discrete random variables, we, we can use moment generating functions. Uh, in fact, if two, uh, say, random variables, uh, two distributions have the same moment generating function with some assumptions, then in fact they, are, they have the same distribution. So well, they are the same, in fact. So, uh, but I, I'm not going to discuss that. That is way too much. And uh, but well, in a more advanced uh, probability class, some of you might take that. If you transfer it, you will see that moment generating function is part of that. And in fact, if at some point you study actually, uh, that is part of the, the P exam. In, I don't know if the P exam still exists. <laughs> Uh, in the past, it was part of the P exam. That was one of the things you should should have known. Uh, anyway, so and there, there are other things here which are uh, just uh, it has assumed that it is like true fact, and that is the probability of having a male or female child. So it's assuming that P of having male or, or female. Is 0.5. I'm, I remember it once I read somewhere that it is not exactly 0.5, but I'm uh, not sure it prefers, I mean, it is for male or female, but one of them is a little bit more than. It was. I, I'm, I have no idea how much it is. You can Google it and see for yourself. But it's assuming that it's 0.5. So that is one assumption. And the other one, which it doesn't really say too much, and I don't think it will discuss anybody, it's just assuming that you can intuitively understand this. But let's look at this uh, again, kind of intuitively. And, um, and so let me erase this so we know this thing. There's nothing except that we have a number of male children. Uh, so male children is like failure. So let me write it here. So, before I go back to that. Now let's look at a negative binomial more carefully. So negative binomial is like this. So we have each one of them, each time that you have that experiment. So this is like an experiment. So I'm going to try it. Or you are doing an experiment in a lab, or you are uh, playing some game or something, uh, and there is a, 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 it has two outcomes: success and failure. Now, in this case, success is having a female, and failure is having a male child. But each one of them is a Bernoulli trial, and these Bernoulli trials are independent, right? So, let me add some other color here. So we have Bernoulli trials, and we might have like, say success here, failure here, failure here, say success, 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 or something like that. In some random order. And we say that we have. A, uh, let's let's look at the, this situation. Uh, let me write some failures. So, uh, I need more to show you what's going on, at least to give you some idea what's happening here. But it doesn't stop. So, so let's say we have failure. The success then failure. Okay, so look at this and then this. Uh, 
success okay don't look for uh, any further just if you just look at this part of the process this is a geometric uh, distribution right geometric remember I I think I wrote G E O M one right. so that is part of the P so P of success So the probability of success is 1p. So that is geometric p. So let's call it say x1. Then this is also geometric p. x2. And uh, the third one is also geometric p and so on. Geometry and so on. <laughs> so, if I have, uh, say, if my random variable x is negative binomial. So let's call it negative neg y now. What are the parameters here? We say that there are failures. So like that, right? Or let's say uh, x, but r successes, right? So r is the number of success. That's what we are. That's fixed. This one is fixed. And we have a probability of success P. So negative binomial has two parameters, number of successes and P. And we talk about what? P of X being X, then probability of X failures before R successes. That's probability of X failures before all success. Okay? So probability of X failures before all successes. Uh, so if I look at this more carefully, what do I say? So this is what? This is like uh, three successes, right? So this is like three successes here. If I stop here, if I stop here, so if I stop here, then it's like I have, uh, I am looking at, if I stop here for this one, this will be negative binomial. How did I write it? Negative binomial. And uh, uh, three successes, and the probability is something. So this one is three successes with some probability P of, success and uh, but what do you see here isn't this number of uh, uh, failures uh, before one success then number of failures before another success number of failures before another success so it seems that if i add these number of failures here here and here it will give me number of failures for this one right so in a sense, if x is this, if x has negative binomial, 3 comma p, then I can write x as, I can write x as x1 plus x2 plus x3. Right? So if x is negative binomial, 3 comma p, 
then I can write it as uh, the sum of three geometric uh, distributions, uh, three random variables uh, with if x has negative binomial uh, distribution uh, three comma p, then it is like that x is the sum of three random variables x one x two x three and these are independent and each one is geometric p. So we can say that the sum of uh, in if we reverse this thing, the sum of geometric, uh, independent geometric uh, random variables is uh, negative binomial. So if I have the sum of three of them, that will be negative binomial three. So if I add all of them, if x1 plus x2 plus xr and xi, is geometric P, then what happens with this X? Then X will be negative binomial of I don't know maybe I'll do it. Well, it's just my, my choice. <laughs> I, I don't know how to divide it. It might be N B or something. I don't know. Negative binomial. Uh, then it will be how many R comma P. Okay, so the sum of R geometric P's is negative binomial R P. Okay, so this is uh, this is just amazing. Uh, so uh, so it's it, it also tells me that the geometric is just an amazing distribution when you add it. You will get something is not geometric anymore, but uh, you remember geometric itself is a negative binomial, is a special negative binomial. So you add geometric and you get a negative binomial from the same family. That is what I'm saying. So you get a distribution from the same family. Uh, now, now, what happens if I add some negative binomials? That was our problem, adding negative binomials. They were not geometric, they were negative binomials. So let's see. So let's see what happens if I add negative binomials. So let's say I'm adding some, uh, let's write them y. And then x. Uh, 3 s. Okay? And let's assume that y i is negative binomial. Uh, let's write uh, how many uh, i comma p. So that is i uh, successes. So this is number of uh, failures before i successes. <laughs> okay. So, and the fixed things are the i's which I put as indices here, uh, so. Now, what is this first one then? In using this theorem, in fact, that I proved intuitively. Uh, so this, uh, using that theorem, using the geometric, this one is the sum of how many geometric? It is the sum of i, right? Geometric. Then the other one is, uh, well, I, uh, what should I, uh, let's say I want, and I, let's, let's write a J, right? That's doesn't have to be one or two, so, so let's say uh, J, okay, K, I, okay, so it doesn't have to be one or two, it, it is K1, K1, uh, successes. Okay, no, I should have written that. So this should be K1, something like that. K1. Then this will be X. Uh, uh, I can continue K1 plus 1, XK1 plus 2, up to XK1 plus K2, right? But this one has K2, K2 successes, and so on. 
And if I continue this way, what will be the last one? The last x is k1 plus k2 up to ks, right? So for the, so this one is the sum of k1 uh, geometric ones with the same p. This one is the sum of k2 geometric ones, except I use the different index. But these are k2 geometric, uh, say, random variables with uh, uh, success, probability of success of p. And I continued, and the last one will be, uh, it ends at this. So I'm not starting, so it ends here. Just look, uh, I'm adding these things. So how many geometric do we have here? We have this many, k1, k2, up to ks. And each one has probability of success of p. So what is this then? I am adding this many geometric series, uh, sorry, random variables. So I'm adding this many geometric random variables. And using that theorem, this should be what? This should be, uh, this should be uh, negative binomial. Remember, 1, 2, 3 is negative 3, right? So that's negative binomial. And how many will that be? K1, K2 up to K1 plus K2 up to Ks and P. Okay? So if I add negative binomials using this observation that you can split a negative binomial into geometric uh, random variables, uh, sum of geometric random variables, then go back when you split each one as such a sum, then put this together. Such a sum gives you a negative binomial. Okay? So this is both ways. The sum of three gives me this, and this one splits in this form. <sighs> okay, so what happens in uh, to uh, our situation? Okay, so and uh, let me write this here: the, the negative binomial. So let's write it as a theorem. And you can use it for that. Uh, if y i is negative binomial with uh, k i and the p as parameters, then So those white eyes are, uh, well, they are not uh, identically distributed, sorry. Whereas, in fact, they are, I, 
just independent. Sorry. Yeah. Identical means if, if I have the, the ki's, if the ki's were, uh, say, the same. So if I had the same distribution. But iid, you will see that. So that's just i, independent. It doesn't need independence yeah. Yeah, sorry, so I, that, that's not iid. So I just need independence. <sighs> okay, so this is the case. Now, in our situation, we have the two brothers was uh, each one of them, xi, was a negative binomial with uh, how many uh, success was two, I guess, and uh, the product the p is uh, one half, 1.5. So that is, uh, so x which is x1 plus x2 plus x3 will be a negative binomial 6 comma 0.5 and p is 0.5 so p of x being x is remember I've uh, what was the formula I can remember so let me see that was uh, uh, r plus x minus 1 so that was uh, 6 uh, plus x minus 1 uh, over x and it was p to power x and uh, over r. Uh, r. Yeah, x is the So 1 minus p to power uh, x. That's the kind of yeah. so, so in our situation we have 6 uh, plus x minus 1 x p is 0.5, the power r is also 0.5, the power x, right? So well, let's write it here. So what do we have here? We have uh, 6 minus 5, 1 is 5 in fact, so I have 5 plus x factorial, 5 plus x factorial, then I have this minus this factorial, that is 5 plus x minus x, that is 5 factorial, x factorial times 0.5 to power r plus x, uh, 6 plus x, sorry, r is 6, 6 plus x. And what is 5 factorial? That is uh, uh, 120, right? 120. So this will be 120. So it is 5 plus x factorial times 0.5 to power 6 plus x over 120 x factorial. Okay. Now you can answer the other two questions, it's asking for ex, ex will be e of x1 plus e of x2 plus e of x3. And this one is negative binomial 2, p1 half, you know the expected value of each. And then it says what's the relationship between e of x and e of each one of them. So e of x is 3 times this. So e of each one of them is this one divided by 3. That is in fact the other two. Uh, parts of the same problem. So, so it's just amazing when you add the negative binomials, you get another negative binomial. And uh, geometric as a special negative binomial has the same property. When you add it, you will get a negative binomial. So that was uh, this, this, this uh, in fact, problem, which uh, on your homework, I guess it is known Assignment 3, problem 22. I'm not sure what, what problem it is in the book or where it is. So, uh, okay, so let me uh, stop this thing and then uh, answer your questions. <laughs>